Hi, I'm Sheridan Emery and I'm exploring connections between children's literature and education for sustainability. UNESCO's Decade of Education for Sustainable Development has been a key driver behind the Federal Government's inclusion of sustainability as a cross-curriculum priority in the new Australian curriculum. UNESCO's intention is to mobilise the educational resources of the world to help create a more sustainable future and the Australian Government's initiative aims to develop a broader appreciation of the need for more sustainable patterns of living. Sustainability is not just about preserving the environment, it also has consequences for social, political and economic realms. Right now, we're living in a culture of unsustainability and we have to transform our current systems through challenging our mental models to envision and negotiate change. According to Mickenberg and Nell, children's literature is an important vehicle for ideas that challenge the status quo, promote social justice, environmental stewardship and greater acceptance of differences. Educators might traditionally choose literature with more obvious environmental themes for exploring concepts of sustainability. Books such as Diary of a Wombat or Yuno's Garden, for example. To broaden students' understandings of the widen, wider dimensions of sustainability, educators might introduce to their students works that critically explore social, economic and political perspectives to bring these themes explicitly into their students' thinking. Australian authors have been active in writing about themes of sustainability, including war and conflict, refugees and place and identity. Reynolds suggests the stories adults present to children are blueprints for living in culture as it exists, but they are also where alternative ways of living are piloted in recognition of the fact that children will not just inherit the future, but need to participate in shaping it. Through the presence of narrative voice, the writer controls how readers understand the text. Nadia Wheatley's My Place, for example, is both a children's text and a children's television series, with more than 20 narrators sharing their experiences of a place in Sydney over the decades since the settling of the Australian colony. In terms of the English curriculum, My Place provides the opportunity for children to recognise that ideas in literary texts can be conveyed from different viewpoints, which can lead to different kinds of interpretations and responses. Children's authoring of texts is emphasised in the Australian curriculum, which has an expanded definition of writing, encompassing linguistic, visual, spatial and audio modes. Multimodal authors, as diverse as picture book illustrators, oral storytellers or computer-based animators, work to harness the resources of more than one mode to richly communicate meaning. Zeba Came on a Boat by Liz Lofthouse is a text written as a poetic narrative accompanied by impressionist style paintings by Robert Ingpen. After being read the story, these students created their own short literary texts, experimenting with the now and then device the author used to convey Zeba's story. In their multimodal authoring, the students were further inspired by Robert Ingpen's illustrations to draw and paint their own representations of Zeba's journey. Sustainability should be addressed in the classroom, not just because it's in the curriculum, but also so we can make the transformation required for a better future for our planet. Children's literature should be enjoyed for its own sake and for the love of a good story. As Reynolds highlights, children's literature can also be a means through which to convey the values of sustainable living, contributing, as it does, to the social and aesthetic transformation of culture by encouraging readers to approach ideas, issues and objects from new perspectives and so prepare the way for change.